Hello everyone. I was going to start this week using my laptop to do this instead of using my cell phone, but I decided not to because of where I currently have it set up and everything. So, I am going to be talking about episode 11 of season 5 of The Masked Singer. <coughs> Excuse me. I've not been feeling very good the last couple of days. Um, it's mostly because of that trial for the hydroxy cut women's formula that I was doing, which I have stopped again. So, did not really lose any weight, maybe two or three pounds, which I could have done on my own just by adjusting what I was eating. Anyway, that's not why you're here. So, the characters that were on, uh, before I forget, <laughs> subscribe to my channel, hit the like button for this video, if you like it, of course, and... I will be telling you who the character was that was unmasked and who that character was. Also, I have been working on um, documenting the clues from the EW.com website that exist for each of the characters that are still remaining on the show. And since this is the 11th episode, and I want to say like at least one of the episodes was a filler but still, there's like 10 episodes that have clues on them, or 9 or 10, but so that's a lot of clues, so it's taken me a while to do that, but I will get those done, and I'm going to try to do them one, like just a video per each character that is left on the show at this point. So, the characters that were on episode 11, which is the semifinal, so next week, we will find out who wins and who all of the characters are, I believe, if I recall from how it works. So, the characters that were left were Piglet, Black Swan, Chameleon, and Yeti. And we found out at the first of the episode that Clue Doodle Doo, we were reminded, said that he would be revealing to us who he was. And I was strongly leaning toward Jamie Foxx or Joel McHale as being him. Um, more toward Joel McHale because he's commonly a guest panelist. I guess they're calling them now instead of judges because they're not really judging. But anyway, he's normally a guest for like several episodes per season. And this season he was only on one episode that I recall. So, I would... I lean more towards Joel McHale as being him. So, there, they had a guest panelist, which was Darius Rucker. It was very great to see him on there. And the first one to perform. Now, I did not write down the name of the song that Chameleon sang or who sings it. And I will try to let you know that um, later when I do find out, perhaps. Like, when I make my final video... Maybe. <laughs> but so the clues that I noticed for Yeti this week was that they showed it what appeared to be a crystal ball. And there was a sign that said North Pole Post Office. There was a grandfather clock. He said he grew up without his dad. Later, his dad showed up at his door and asked him to let him back into his life. And he chose to accept him and let him be part of his life. That was He felt like that was the mature thing to do. Um, seems like there was something else. Oh, yes, there were three stars on his, which now that I think about it, could be a three-star general. He talked about moving around. Um, I feel like that was in a, oh, yeah. They showed a part where each of them spoke a little bit before they revealed who Clue Doodle Doo was, I think, was when it was. And, you know, they were like, I don't know who this guy could be. And talking about him interrupting them and stuff such as that. And, but that was when I think he said something about moving around as a kid a lot. And having to learn to fit in. But that was something he was always good at. Um, I believe it was Yeti that said, that said that, I'm almost certain. So that made me go, yeah, the, maybe perhaps the three stars, the three star general, because he's made reference before to his father perhaps being in the military and told us that he has great respect for members of the military and does what he can to help them out. So, um, that being said, the song 
that Yeti sang was Celebration by Cool and the Gang. Now, when he was singing, I was going, I kind of feel like if this was Eminem, he'd be putting more zap into it. Had a little bit more drama. I don't know. Um, his clue drop, they did clue drops um, that came down and the panelists got them and read what they were and who they were for and such as that. It connected each of the characters to one of the panelists, which I kind of felt like they had already done this season. But I don't know for sure. But he was his connection was to Nicole and it was a surfboard. And he said that they rubbed elbows in Santa Monica. Shh, that didn't help her out on who he was. And I was like, he's probably going to turn out to be Omarion, which was who the buzz was that he was on the internet, who the buzz has been. And Robin Thicke, that was his original guest, was Omarion. And he's like, I know the way that he moves. And I know that he has the talent to dance and sing and rollerblade. And he's like, you know, he was absolutely certain it was Omarion. And I was like, I still feel like he would have put a little bit more charisma into this performance if it had been Eminem. But I'm sticking with Eminem. Because, yeah. <laughs> he can sing. He can dance. I'm pretty sure he can roll over late. I want to see Eminem be on here. I want it to be Eminem. Right? So the next one that performed. Now, you may recall I said that it was either going to be Yeti or Black Swan that went home based on their performance and the song that they chose. Right? So, Black Swan, her clues, I didn't there was a lot in her clues that I probably did not notice. I'm going to be honest with that right now. It seemed like there was like a pinkish tan background and there was a chair that had a maple leaf on it, implying something about Canada, right? And she had a name tag thing that said, hello, my name is number one. And I went, that seems familiar for some reason, but I couldn't find any information as to why it might. So anyway... Um, and she said, be unafraid. So I was like, there's a song called Unafraid. So I looked into who sings Unafraid. And apparently that's Stevie Nicks from... All of a sudden, Backstreet Boys. I don't know where that came from. Stevie Nicks from... My brain is not thinking of the name of the group. Oh my gosh, that's embarrassing. But anyway, apparently Stevie Nicks sang this song. And I'm like, well, I don't think she's connected to Canada. She was born, I believe, in Phoenix, Arizona. I've looked her up for various things before. Possibly she lives in Canada now. I don't know for sure. Um, but she said, of, of course, like she's been saying since the first episode she was on, that she's been facing her fears. Um, the song that she sang was Tequila by Dan and Shay, which is a song that I really love. And I was like, oh, she better blow this out of the park. And she did. I was kind of disappointed with her performances last week and the week before. But I still think there was an issue with the sound for her. And I forgot who went home last week. But for the first, the Russian Dolls, for her and the Russian Dolls last week, I felt like there was a sound issue, and I felt like that was part of why the Russian Dolls went home last week, honestly. But, so, um, yeah, she knocked it out of the ballpark this week. She did a real good job. I was like, she's not going home yet. He's probably going to be the one that goes home, unless the others don't perform as well, because I felt like he could have done better on Celebration by Cool and the Gang. He did good, but I felt like he could have done better. Um, but anyway, so her clue drop was for Robin, and it was a celebrity VIP tag thing, and she said that she enjoyed hanging out with him at the after party. Now, I still like Selena Gomez for her. We all know Selena Gomez dated Justin Bieber, who was from Canada, so that could be a connection for that. She said that she has conquered her self-doubt. So... That made me think, and I'm like, okay, so she has conquered her self-doubt. I don't really know that that's something that Selena Gomez has to deal with. Um, but to a degree, I suppose any celebrity could have to deal with self-doubt. We all, you know, sometimes don't have the confidence that it appears to other people that we have. And there are a lot of celebrities that deal with stage fright and stuff like that. But another thing that I noticed... For those of you, another thing that I found when I was looking out, up stuff about people that me and other people think that it might be that has connections to Canada. Um, a lot of people think that it's 
that Black Swan is Joanna Levisco, Jojo. And though I couldn't find a connection, a direct connection to her with Canada, I did discover she was born in 1990 and there's a man, I believe his name is Chris Levisco, who was born in 1980, who is a Canadian hockey player. So I was like, maybe, you know, an indirect connection there. I don't know. Um... I still can't believe I can't think of the group that Stevie Nicks is in. <laughs> Stop trying to think of it. Maybe it'll come to me. But anyway, um, but for various reasons, um, along with like the performance that she has done, I'm still going with Selena Gomez. I feel like she doesn't have any reason to not have confidence. But as I have said on videos in the past, I know for a fact that Miley Cyrus talks about having confidence issues and not feeling sure of herself all of the time. And she's an excellent performer and an ex excellent actress. In my opinion, there would be no reason why she should be nervous or have stage fright. But Demi Lovato also suffers from stage fright. So there are a lot of celebrities that do have that issue. Um, but yes, right now I'm, I'm sticking with my guess is for both of them. Um, Yeti, I still think is Eminem. Black Swan, I think is Selena Gomez. So, then they did the thing, which I don't know where I wrote all the stuff for it, because I then started writing down the stuff for Phoenix. Or not Phoenix. <laughs> I guess Million. He made a comment about Phoenix. Anyway, that was when they did the um, talking about Clue Doodle Doo. I think. Anyway, I wrote down that Piglet is doing this for his kids there. Is what I, I wrote that down there for some reason. But it doesn't appear that that's actually when they did do it. So, I don't know. Confusing myself. Um, unless that was the only one of those that I wrote down. And it might have been. Because I have stuff written down for Chameleon. And confusing myself. I have stuff written down for chameleon. Um, where did I start writing stuff for piglet? That is a very good question. I have so much confused myself here. <laughs> Um, okay, well, I'll, I'll figure it out here in a second, hopefully. I mean, I did write down Piglet doing it for his kids, but then Chameleon was the one that performed next, and I'm guessing that I just didn't write, like, this is Piglet over here, all of this is, <laughs> except for the Clue Doodle Doo stuff, so I'm guessing that I just didn't write his name here because I had written it over there, but I thought I wrote some of the stuff that the other characters said, too, during that time, and apparently I didn't. Anyway... Um, so, Chameleon was the next one that performed, and they were showing bling, like they have been showing the chain with the medallion thing on it, um, a lot for both, for Chameleon and Russian Dolls, they were showing those, so he had that, that has the bling on it, um, he said, he is the one that said that he's adjusted well, um, not Yeti, to moving around back and forth and um, indicated that his father has been in the military. So, okay, that wasn't Yeti. That was Chameleon. Um, and, yeah, said he'd moved a lot. They showed a two-tier bus, like a double-decker bus. And he said he created a brand that has reached millions. Um, he also said, where else can a Chameleon... Camellier, where else can a colorful cam hog the camera? And I was like, Cam, well, maybe it's Cam Newton. Um, so I looked into him. He is six foot five. He's definitely tall enough that it could be him. But now I'm going to confuse myself again. <laughs> anyway, um, I was about to say there was a connection to Drew Carey, but that is not him. Anyway. Um, it showed, like, a pillar that had bricks laid on top of it, like a concrete pillar type thing, and had bricks laid on top of it, and his clue drop 
was for Darius Rucker, and it was a snake. And Darius is like, a snake? Hmm. Well, he said there were a lot of corn dogs. Phoenix was there. He said that it was in Arizona. So I have two different thoughts on the Phoenix was there thing. It could be that Caitlyn Jenner was there when they hung out on, he said they hung out on stage, they shared the stage. So it could be that Caitlyn Jenner was there or it could be that he was saying Phoenix was there because they were in Phoenix when this happened. My guess is it's a state fair. Darius Rucker is a country music singer. Country music singers often sing at state fairs. And there are corn dogs at state fairs. So, my thought on that is they performed together at a state fair in Phoenix, Arizona. That's my thought on it. Um, which really does me no good. <laughs> but that's my thought on it. But I did um, look into, like, the brand, like a brand that has reached millions of people that possibly was created by Wiz Khalifa, since so that's who I have decided Chameleon most likely is, and discovered that through, blah, 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 that he has a clothing line that is sold at Spencer's, which is a novelty store that sells, you know, shoes, belts, wallets, and t-shirts, dress shirts. I mean, they they sell quite a bit of clothing along with their novelty items, but they started out as a novelty store. And his line is called Young Khalifa. Y-U-N-G Khalifa. So, um, it's a collaboration between him and someone else, possibly Young Money. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's a clothing line that potentially has reached millions of people. Also, as I said last week, I found out that he did the Weed Farm app, which is one of the most downloaded apps ever. I don't recall that I had ever heard of it, but I'm not a weed person, so. Um, but surprisingly, my son who is hadn't heard of it either, so. And now this is where I'm going to get confused because I didn't write down that these were Piglet's Clues, but I, yeah, these are all Piglet's Clues here. Um, it showed like a tree that had instruments hanging from it, and he said that early on he had a very grueling career, but um, now he's been able to spend more time with his family. He referred, it showed a farm. He said whether it be landscaping, gardening, or farming, I believe. And they showed a llama, which looked like it was rainbowish to me. <laughs> Multicolored llama. Um, but the llama implies a connection possibly to Drew Carey in some way or the other. Uh, I did a little bit of research into that. He also made a comment about Sunday football being his thing. Um, okay, so I guess that's all of the clues that I really caught for him from this time. And the song that he sang was Bruises by Lewis Capelli, which, of course, he did awesome at. I honestly feel like Piglet is most likely going to be the one that wins this. Could turn out to be wrong, but I feel like he will be. Um, and I still feel like he could be Adam Sandler. <laughs> There's a couple of people who I've been going through the clues, and he's the one that I was going through the clues for, and I'm like, I don't really see how I was like, this is just detailing Adam Sandler from the first couple of episodes, but I do see s stuff in there that indicates it could be him. I see stuff that indicates it could be Mark Wahlberg. There's a lot of stuff in there um, like Friday Night Lights, I did not know until I was asking about it a while ago, but apparently it's based on a book that was written by Stephen King, either that or my assistant is incorrect, um, and he also made reference to A Perfect Storm, which is by Stephen King, so I'm going, well, could it possibly be Stephen King, <laughs> you know, and there are a lot of people that have been in several different Stephen King movies. One of the people I had considered for Piglet early on was Johnny Depp, which I, I feel Johnny Depp is too tall to be Piglet, but um, there were all the ship clues and the pirate clues and stuff like that, and he does sing. He plays instruments, you know, so it's like it could be. 
but the research I did into the um, possibly the llama referring to Drew Carey thing, a lot of buzz on the internet, and um, almost called her Gwen. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> Different show. Um, but Jenny and Nicole have been talking a lot about possibly Piglet being Nicholas Shea. So he was one of the people that I looked up in connection to Drew Carey, and I discovered that, of course, Nicholas Shea, as well as his brother Drew, were born in Cincinnati, Ohio. Drew Carey is from Cleveland, Ohio, so there's kind of a connection there. And it sometimes sort of kind of seems like this guy is actually a football player, too, but I feel like there are entirely too many clues for him to just, I'm not saying football players aren't important, mind you, but there's far too many clues for it to be someone who is only known for being an NFL player, in my personal opinion, because he has so many clues. And um, one of the clues that I didn't notice on his deal, in fact, was a black spider, which he had had a black spider in his clues before that had a pink bow on it. So there's a strong connection to a black spider, which got Ken thinking about Charlotte's Web and Good Charlotte and Joel Madden. Oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. I think that's who it is. <laughs> Anyway, I'm a, I did listen to Good Charlotte some, but I have not heard a lot of their music, so sorry about that. Um, but yeah, so some of the other research that I did, and I couldn't really find a connection to Drew Carey or Ohio, um, I should have looked into the football player that I was thinking at one point who plays for the Patriots. Though Piglet had the football helmet that had the horse on it, which is one of the things that has me confused because the football players that I think that I thought most likely from um from the clue package were I'm not gonna think of his name, the guy that played for the Patriots that does the karaoke videos he shares on Facebook. Can't think of his name. Or Larry Fitzgerald, which ironically someone said for Chameleon, and I was like, oh, I thought him early on. Oh, but wait, that was for Piglet because of the not being able to find love and then suddenly finding it and now being a family man thing because that fits Larry Fitzgerald. Um, and he fits some of the number clues like 11 and 11. He, I want to say, started his NFL career with the Arizona Cardinals in 2011. His jersey number is 11. The 03, um, he was in three, not Super Bowls, uh, the Pro Bowl. He was in Pro Bowl three times. So I'm like, I mean, it could be Larry Fitzgerald, but I don't know for sure. I'm still curious as to whether there is an actual football player. It said there were three, a total of three Super Bowl appearances. But as I have said before, I feel like that can be referring to performers who have graced the halftime show stage during the Super Bowl, because that's a Super Bowl appearance. Um, but, so my other research I did concerning um, Piglet was, like, I'm trying to find somebody who plays multiple instruments, because it showed, I want to say it showed a fiddler violin, it showed a guitar, and there was there were at least one or two other instruments. I think one of them was drums. And this led me to none other than Ryan Tedder of One Republic. Ryan Tedder plays drums. He plays guitar. He plays piano. He probably, I mean, I'm sure he can play the fiddle or play it as a violin. He was born in Tulsa, Oklahoma, which is not far from where I live. So he might have a farm there or his family could have a farm there. Um, I know he still goes there fairly frequently. And one of the things that I found out about him is that he owns the Tulsa Angels, which is a football team. He also has a chain of restaurants that I want to say it said is in the Seattle area, which I thought was very interesting, which is called Fat Tedder Burger. And he has his own brand of vodka, which I didn't think to write down, but I thought those things were interesting, and I'm going to look through the clues and see if they connect there. 
Um, but yeah, he plays a whole lot of instruments and he's always talking, um, Piglet is always talking about his children and, you know, he said that he's able to stay home more now. Well, bands are not touring as much or at all because of COVID. So that would have him being at home and Ryan Tedder does have four children. So, um, right now. I'm up in the air. I'm thinking it's either the dude that does karaoke who is an actual football player. It's possibly still Adam Sandler. I'm also considering Mark Wahlberg because of some of the movies. Can Stephen King sing? Does anyone know? I mean, could be him. I'm considering Johnny Depp. Um, and I'm considering Ron Tedder. I don't remember if I already named him or not, but... I'm, uh, I'm really, I'm really up in the air about this one. Like, I just, I really don't know for sure. But I am still leaning fairly heavily toward Adam Sandler, given the clues. Because I know that he's been on movies that involve boats also. But I know there's the pirate ship. But he was in, uh, he was in like the cobbler where he turned into different people. He was in the bedtime stories one where they went places and, you know, th they lived the stories. So, it's like, I don't know. Um, I still think it could be Adam Sandler. He is a singer. He's a great performer. So, we'll have to wait and see. Um, so, the next thing that happened on the episode was Clue Doodle Doo got revealed, right? He was going to reveal himself. He sang a song, which I, oh, he, he sang Return of the Mac. Um, I didn't write down who originally sang that song, but he did sing Return of the Mac. I was listening to the song, and I'm like, well, I know Joel McHale does sing, but to me, it sounds more like Jamie Foxx than it does Joel McHale. So, I'm like, I'm changing my guess to Jamie Foxx, right? which some of the panelists said also. And then he had he had a clue drop thing. His clue was for Ken, and it was a giraffe with a parachute, and he made a comment about that they were in a movie together that not only had a giraffe, but a lot of animals. And so Ken and I, like I said it before Ken even said it, <gasps> Ken was in The Zookeeper with Kevin James. Kevin James can sing. And I'm going, but like the body stuff type, well, I mean, he's, gotten in better shape and everything, so it could possibly be Kevin James, but I was going, I still think he basically sounded like Jamie Foxx, though, so I still decided to go with Jamie Foxx for Clue Doodle Doo. Well, they revealed him, and it turned out that Clue Doodle Doo, my friends, was none other than, I predicted he would be on here at some point in time, not in this format, and I was very, very glad to see him. It was Donnie Wahlberg. Jenny said, he sounds exactly like Akon. She guessed Akon. And she's like, I'm supposed to be the golden ear. Like, I get so many people right. And I didn't recognize my own husband's singing voice, which I predicted would happen whenever he came on there. <laughs> so that was very funny. Um... He, you know, he, he was pretty choked up about uh, being revealed and everyone's reaction to it. And he said he doesn't see how, like, when the other characters came up there and they were going to vote, he's like, I don't see how you guys do this because I just did this to give little clues connected to you guys and myself and then did this one performance. And it is so difficult to do. It's so hot in there. And so hard to see where you're going and stuff like that. You know, he let them know that he greatly respected and admired them. Then they revealed Yeti, whom I had predicted was probably going to be the next one revealed depending on the song he chose and how he did performing it. So, uh, they went through all of the panel's guesses and everything, you know, and I'm like, I mean, I'm still thinking up here in my head, I don't know enough about Omarion's personal life. I don't know about enough about Omarion's music to know whether or not it would be Omarion. 
but I feel like that's probably who it's going to turn out to be. But I'm still saying Eminem because I really want it to be Eminem because he can sing. Um, a lot of people, which a lot of people don't realize, and a lot of times he doesn't even want to admit himself. So they unmask Yeti, and he was Omarion. And that was Robin's original guess, as I think I mentioned earlier. And Robin stuck with his guess because he's like, I know his moves. He's a friend of mine. He rollerblades. He does the certain little step thing or slide step, I think he called it, um, that Yeti has been doing whenever he dances. And he's like, it's got to be Omarion. So he got it right. Um, so I have a lot of stuff that I have planned to do the next few days. Um trying to get my room reorganized still and I'm kind of behind on some chores that I need to do and like I said I've not been feeling super 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 great and um, stopped taking the hydroxy cut that trial is over um at one point I had actually gained weight when I was taking it got up to like 178 pounds which was about two and a half pounds more than I weighed whenever I started taking it and when I weighed yesterday I weighed 175.6 weighed today after not feeling good yesterday and just not eating as much because I wasn't feeling well because I had been taking the hydroxy cut and after I take it apparently for about five days it just makes me feel completely and totally drained so like I said I quit taking it but I didn't eat as much as I normally do yesterday because I wasn't feeling well so when I weighed this morning I weighed like 173 and a half so I just lost maybe about three pounds, which I could very easily gain back or very easily lose more. Who knows? Um, but yeah, I've been trying to do, to get more exercise and eat better and stuff like that because my health is important to me and I don't want to end up having heart problems and asthma and diabetes and all of that sort of stuff. So I'm trying to eat better and exercise a little more, um, work my way up to exercising significantly more because now I'm pretty can't think of the word they use for it, um, sedentary, yes, that's it, pretty sedentary, I just sit or lay around most of the time, I mean, when I work, I walk back and forth some, I walk back and forth some at the home, at the house, I walk the dogs, but I'm not nearly as active as I should be, so anyway, um, I do plan to write down all of the notes about the clues, for the characters that are left that will be in the final three in the finale, which are Black Swan, Piglet, and Chameleon. I am predicting that Piglet will win. We might get surprised, but I think Piglet will win. I've thought that for quite some time now, um, which cracks me up because, nope, that was also on the... <laughs> I've been watching American Idol and The Voice and The Masked Singer, and I'm thinking somebody said this is the first time in a long time. Maybe, it, no, that was on The Masked Singer. I think it was Robin said this is the first time in a long time that we've not had an obvious winner. And I'm going, really? Because, like, pretty much the first time I saw Piglet perform, I was like, he's probably going to win. And I still feel that way. So, don't get me wrong. Black Swan, like I said, did excellent on her song that she sang. And Chameleon did very well on his. I just feel like... Yeah, uh, Yeti. I just feel like Piglet's um, performances are more lively, they're more entertaining, and his song choices have been steady good. So, I cannot wait to see what all of them do next week. Um, oh, I hope it's going to be on next week, but I can't wait to see what they're going to do next week, and I will post the, the videos about the clues for each of the individual ones of them. I'm going to try to do Piglet's later today. But do not hold me to that. And then I will try to do the other two on Saturday because I'm not working Saturday either. So, for right now, those are my plans for those things. Everyone stay safe. Have a good whatever part of time. <laughs> Golly gee. I cannot get my catchphrase again. Anyway, everyone have a good whatever time of night or day it is in your part of the world stay positive 
and stay safe. You'll see me next time.